Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Millennium Debunk. I am CK, your host. With my co-host today, Grace. We are from Sweat Group. Sweat Group is a training and development company for corporations and individuals in Malaysia. Being in this line, we actually realized that many companies out there they are facing a challenge of communicating and retaining the next generation of employees in the workplace due to the generation gap. Oftentimes, millennials also feel like they are like the most misunderstood generation, and they don't have a space to voice out. Hence, this is what the program is about: being a neutral platform for the millennial to speak up and for the current employee to further understand just what are we, the millennials, thinking about. So today we have three wonderful guests with us, which I will allow them to introduce themselves. Can I have Abigail to introduce herself first? Hi. So my name is Abigail, and I'm 19 this year. I'm currently studying musical theatre in Korea, and I briefly did a short like internship slash like work uh, after graduating high school in this. In this theater industry. Yeah. Hello, my name is Muhammad Imran bin Ahmad Sharifuddin. Uh, I am 22 this year. Uh, for work experience-wise, I have been working ever since I started my college, which was back in 2016, and I am currently in my degree of psychology at Taylor's. So I've been working while studying for almost four years nonstop. Wow. Yeah. My name is Assam. I'm 24 years old, and I've uh, got around three months to a year of uh, work experience in press, uh, in public relations, mostly uh, press release writing, news features, and uh, building media relations. I'm currently mm-hmm. doing my masters in business information systems, and yeah, that's that's about it. This time we are doing things very differently because we got. Viewers from uh, from outside of our company, and then they have a, a few questions. Actually, a tons of questions for you guys. And today we are doing a random question section, where we pick one question randomly from the audience and put this question for you, and for, just for you to answer. So, yeah. Okay. So how it will work is I have a box with all the random numbers here. I will pick a number, and. CK will read the question out, and he will decide who will answer this question. But if you oh. ever have any similar thoughts or you want to add in stories, feel feel free to do so. Okay. Okay. So okay. we shall start. Then I right, pick one. Mm. Okay, number five. Number five. Um, in what scenario will you feel more ownership towards the job you have? I repeat the question. In what scenario will you feel more ownership? Just the job you have. I would like to pass this to Imran. Maybe before that, Imran, since like you've been working for the past four years as well, right? Part time working. Yeah. May I, may I also know like what industries were you working in? Uh, I've worked in. I wouldn't say multiple industries. Lah, it's always mm-hmm. side jobs and always uh short term employment ship. Uh, for mm. example, I have worked on um, building courses for Spartan. Is that the name? Okay. Something like that. That was. Uh, it's just one of those obstacle courses that usually they have. Oh, for, uh, okay, you know, okay. Those. Okay. So I used to work that for quick jobs. Usually, when they have an area that's nearby, I've also worked in F and B, like fast food chain restaurants. I've worked in Pizza Hut. I've also worked as a retail seller. I've also worked at a cyber cafe. Now also doing my writing, driving for myself.、Uh, I'm doing grab business. That's the list of the things I've done so far. Yeah, so I'm all about trying new things to increase my skill set. After leaving, after learning a significant amount from the job, it gave me a sense. I guess for me, that was a sense of ownership where I felt proud of my job. Where I knew that if my specific goal that was assigned to me, that I do it right, it could impact someone else's life.、Mm-hmm. How towards customer service, how you talk to someone, greet someone, or when to initiate a conversation with a certain someone, whether they feel them, you feel they need it or don't, you know.、Mm-hmm. Whatever job that I've been doing so far, I always make sure that at least if I had a customer can walk away a bit more satisfied than they are coming in,、mm-hmm. regardless of which job. That, that for me, that is my policy. 
so that mm. gave me a sense of ownership for each job which makes me want to do it right each time because if you're not going to do yeah. it right don't do it at all that's what my mom used to say so the ownership part i think you got it but what motivates you to do it and not just be like uh well i'm just passing time clocking in my hours you know yeah, so what yeah, motivates yeah. you to really give your best in your that, job the thing that motivates me more is whenever that i try to do good for other customers or the mm-hmm. skill sets knowledge i learn from mm-hmm. and there's more to learn that drives me because mm-hmm. i really know that the money is not going to be much but mm-hmm. if i can make my work environment a bit more happy and satisfying and more quality that drove me to go to work wow yeah because there's a lot I'm, of diversity in, yeah. in what i'm doing like like i really admire the fact that you have a lot of diversity in your work and i want to ask like when you, one word you tend to use a lot is learning would you say that like your main value like would you say you're a growth oriented person when it comes to your professional experience yes i would say that i am more to grow okay mm, you were saying that if you on your own you want to make it like a better place and all that so as an employer i'm thinking like how can i further motivate you is there any tips for them transparent okay. communication not complete honesty because i know that in some certain industries that's it's a skill that is mm-hmm. uh, required having transparent communication with your supervisor or whatever does break down the barrier of worker and i mean it's true he's your su- supervisor but regardless mm-hmm. you're still a human being and you both just want to earn a living then i wouldn't be feeling like going to a meet boss all the time it's going to a company or a family you know or a group of friends that's mm. all working towards the same goal which is mm. to earn financial uh, sustenance or whatever you would like to call it so that environment itself i believe is very important even if it's small humans we can adapt to it and we are social creatures it was the job basically for my point of view what i get from mm-hmm. this question is like how can i make the millennial be more responsible on their job Let's say if from the employee point of view, I often see that millennial right now go out and work, and that's like, oh, let, let's say for nine to five, nine, I come in nine sharp, I end at nine, five sharp. I don't want to work any more than that. So how can I make them feel like they have to take up their responsibilities? Okay, you, you seem to be explaining a struggle in in having the employee actually contribute. They come in nine to five or seven to five. And yeah. and they're not very uh, proactive in how they contribute, yeah. but then like for example, we get someone like Imran from from what I'm hearing, he's he's a very proactive individual. Yeah. It's not that he wants or waits for the boss to motivate him. He has his own intrinsic mm-hmm. motivation, mm-hmm. which is not something that every employee will will share. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It, I I see like I admire where Imran is coming from, and I also see the challenge that CK mm-hmm. is is. explaining like how could you build a sense of ownership in an employee that is not proactive or that is yeah. not really looking to learn so mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's a bit of a challenge i'm, I'm not going to lie mm-hmm. <laughs> i feel like sometimes it's like the lack of understanding towards their roles because i i feel that in every industry there is a certain art and craft to each in their own modern way wherever that i choose to work i want to have a sense of pride of that i feel majority of the millennials that go into the workforce now after a degree they are mm-hmm. quite clueless and i understand that that's why i recommended transparent communication so maybe if they understood their role and understood the importance of the job maybe mm-hmm. you know Can i ask you like when you say understanding do you mean to have the employee understand the purpose of what they're doing Yes. Like like the the end game kind of thing that drives them that okay, here's what I'm contributing and here's the difference I'm making and so that would drive the employee or gives the gives them a sense of ownership. Do I yeah, understand I think you correctly? So. Yep. I would say that okay. is one of the ways that you can look at it because when you start understanding your role and doing it proper, who knows? Yeah. Maybe and then you start having proper communications with your bosses or your supervisors mm-hmm. and you end up yeah. taking a uh, part in major projects. So through that then there's also another skill that they need to learn which you kind of have to go through trial and error which is like how to renegotiate with your mm-hmm. boss in terms of your contract or how well you've done or what rights you know as a worker and 
employee, which is a lot of things that millennials have to face alone. So, so it's the explanation like know why you're in the workplace. It'll be a lot easier to do what you need to do. But when it becomes easier to do what you need to do, you mentioned negotiation to to be able to get your rights. Because knowing the why is not enough. Like, okay, I'm here to support or contribute. But yeah. what am I getting in return for the contribution? Yeah, like, exactly. Right, you were explaining the the financial sustenance. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we we need to put food in the table, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And as millennials, yeah. we're not getting much of a chance to do that. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I I see what you're saying. When you say transparent communication, right? What kind of information would you like the your superiors to communicate with you about? They tell you, okay, these are our goals. Or let's say, right, they may have written their goals and values on a wall poster somewhere. Would that be counted transparent communication? I guess yes, you could say that that is transparent communi- communication. Though it seems a bit, um, it felt very school like. It could work. I'll take an example. For example, whenever there's a job that I can't really do or do mm-hmm. properly or do right, I'll yeah. just straight up uh, admit it. Like, so mm-hmm. I don't know how to do this or whatever. Blah blah blah. You, I've admitted the th- areas that I can't do it and. That's where the supervisor, I believe, is supposed to like come over and take charge, mm-hmm. or you know, maybe assign someone senior to bring that person up to speed or instruct the instructions so that the worker itself is up to speed, mm-hmm. because they are under their wing, which is that wing is under a huge banner of the company's face. So it's all about the small cogs. If they're okay. all well, well oiled, when and well oiled being the transparent communication possibly, mm-hmm. where like. After working hours, something to do with your office mates or whichever you want to call it, mm-hmm. colleagues. Because we're not going in and out. Of, yeah. We don't want to feel like going to school. You also mean like building relationship as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from what I hear, it's like the superiors allow transparent communication from the employees. Mm-hmm. That the employees have the rights to speak up, uh, and they should speak up. Allow space for them to speak up. Mm-hmm. And then come into the picture to assist them in areas that they are mm-hmm. not able to help themselves. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next question. All right. Okay. That's so, a wrap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just picked this up, not on purpose. Number six. Number six. Six. Oh, this is the interesting one. Does millennial talk about work after work? Why? Again, does millennials talk about work after work? I've never really like worked worked before, but like mm-hmm. I think there's a time and a place to speak to talk about it after work. I guess it depends on how serious that work matter is. Whether mm-hmm. is it appropriate to talk about it after work, or mm-hmm. is it better to leave work behind? You know, because a lot of times. Two people, they may have a friendship outside of their working area, but bringing that work topic out into their real life, and sometimes it may affect that friendship. Sometimes it may affect that relationship in terms of how personal that work topic is to them. You know, and mm-hmm. there may be fights about it after that. May, there may be arguments about it after that. I I don't know, but like it it really depends on what the topic is of that work. Yeah, I want to understand what how how any example how does it like how do people fight about stuff when you talk about work? I've seen I've heard of stories where like two people they are close friends or or their husband and wife or something like that you know and they and because they work together and mm-hmm. when they go back home and somehow they still talk about work it's it there is no fine line in between anymore it's like. Your work and your personal life is one. Can I can I slide one line in real quick? Yeah. Just hold your point right there. You could say that they married to their work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Abigail, oh. uh, can I can I ask you? Okay, uh, when when you say the fine line between like work life and and personal life, let's say you have like the the example you gave of a married couple who work together, right? If there is an issue in the workplace and there is no Fine line or separation between work life and and like personal life, that like 
the tension over here in the workplace is kind of going to bleed on to the the personal life is that yeah. is that what you mean yes. that is yeah that's exactly what i mean and sometimes it may go to a point where you fight about you argue about things that it doesn't even matter in your life but because it's about your work mm. and that's why it becomes your life like i i guess that's all there is always a place and a time to argue about stuff to talk about stuff but a lot of times i think bringing work outside of work may not be the best idea in my opinion abigail so you mean for you you wouldn't really talk about work outside of work yeah um, okay but also depending on subject as well yeah okay uh, to me work and and personal life overlap a bit in a sense that talking about work is not like okay i'm talking about the specific task that that i did at the workplace to mm. to me i i connect work to a personal driver or a personal passion of of mine or like mm-hmm. if if i'm working in a place i'd like to be driven by a sense of purpose in that sense work is part of my personal life work is not something that's purely financial although sure i i see the importance i mean it's it's essential if i'm not going to work yeah. i'm going to starve yeah. and I, i'll be homeless but yeah. Yeah. but but there's more to it than that there's there's uh, an element of contribution to society because if i think of, of my work is purely something to to fill my own stomach then i'm not really thinking about the people around me i'm not thinking about society and mm. in that sense mm. my my morality could be subjected to to uh, compromise i can be like it doesn't matter what other people's well-being is let me create a product that's possibly poisonous to other people and i'm making money it doesn't matter yeah in that sense i can enjoy talking about work if it relates to a sense of service a sense of passion or compassion mm-hmm. and uh, yeah that's uh, that's the kind of work i would enjoy talking about the bottom line is talk about work if it's if it's fashion and service <laughs> very interested to know as some have you introduced your age i find that you have very much answers <laughs> i'm 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 24 and i'm with very limited experience so i feel like all this idealistic thought process the day i get dipped into the workplace <laughs> I will I will get turned into a cog in the machine of capitalism and I will just carry <laughs> along with everyone's self-centered whims and carry on filling my pocket. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> But uh Inshallah. previously you had internship experiences? Uh, yes, I I did. I um I had uh, an internship at a Cyprus-based uh, PR firm. Mm-hmm. Uh, called Action Global Communications, and I yeah. did some freelance writing with them for for a while. So okay, would you talk about your work when you were working there with perhaps other colleagues? Yeah, yeah, I uh, I would not in the sense of fashion. To be to be frank, like it was mm-hmm. more of uh, the the line of work there was writing for hospitality, Radisson Blue or, or Jumeirah. <laughs> or writing for electronics I wrote for Huawei and stuff like that but mm-hmm. what was really enjoyable was the nature of the workplace to be very honest like there wasn't this whole cubicle system it was just right. like uh, an office with a group of friends even the manager was as friendly it's like the line between personal and and work life is quite blurred like we we'd sit we'd uh, be working we take a break we talk about our lives and mm-hmm. every now and then I'd come home from work and There's always a funny story to share or a funny experience or mm-hmm, even yeah, some yeah. feedback like something I did wrong and I got feedback. I'm like, "Oh, I learned this thing today. That's actually quite yeah. pleasant." So, yeah. yeah. It was it was a great experience to be honest. Coming from the mindset of an employer, sometimes, you know, they they might bring up a certain work that you did. Mm. Would you say it's it's okay for them to bring it up after work hours or would you prefer to have them say um you know talk with you during the work hours like maybe call you into the room and then like speak privately with you if it's a reminder of a specific task and like we're we're having lunch I'm having lunch with my boss and my boss goes sure. like hey Sam don't forget to do this thing tomorrow that we were supposed to do or like like you know we have this task to finish tomorrow yeah that would be a bit uh okay like uh, it's a bit discomforting like we're not at work 
But if we're okay. sitting and having lunch and yeah. we're talking about a funny moment with a client or maybe something we learned from, from something we've done. So if mm. we're self-reflecting, if we're reflecting over work, sure, I don't mind that. But if we're projecting the future tasks that we need to do, we can just do that at the workplace. So you so, mean if we're talking about personal growth, but using your work experience for examples to refer to, then you're okay with that? Yeah, so as, as think? long as it's, it's personal growth, reflection, uh, a yeah. lovely story, a moral, a joke, anything in the past where we're reflecting, we're sharing and bonding, uh, mm -hmm. sure. But uh, if we're going to talk about tasks, let's let's keep it to the workplace kind of thing. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I agree in both, actually. Abigail, yeah, there are some things that you shouldn't talk about. And they're like, depending on the nature of the job, it could be a counselor or a psychiatrist. They can't mm. just simply talk about their work, you know, because it's an, they're basically breaking their, their contract that they made with their clients. Mm hmm and then like just like as sam also mentioned like it's also okay to talk about what well, it's a way it's a form of stress reliever mm -hmm. but then that's where it gets like very sketchy because that like, once that goes into gossip then that's another yeah. story where we have all yeah. the politics and then we start judging people based on what we've heard that's also oh. another slippery slope but mm -hmm. if <laughs> why we talk about like work after work i think that's fine as long as it's kept to a minimum, we don't have to replicate the entire same intensity as during working hours. Sure, it's sure. light and casual, it's fine as long as it's quick, you know. Like how, how would you, uh, I want to expand a bit, how would you draw the line between gossip and just, or like just sharing, you know? <laughs> Honestly, let me tell you when girls gather, okay, not just girls actually, but Actually, anyone, like, we've never got, got human <laughs> beings, right, who come from the same place, right? Then you have lunch together, you know? Then you go, hey, you know, I heard, uh, this fella said this, you know, and then this fella, you know, and then, so then, you know, it becomes like a, although you don't want it to be a gossip, you kind of, like, just want to share your feelings, right? But then because feelings take place, people are still people, and they can get excited. They say, oh, really? Uh? Really? Uh? Why, uh? Yo, I tell you what, you know, then it can be, they can continue and... Yeah, like, okay. if it's to release stress momentarily and not to diminish anyone's imagery, which is kind of hard, but if it's fine, then if you can do that and manage that, it's fine. For me, how I do it is like, if any news that I'm hearing is bad news mm -hmm. that reflects on their personality, I would not want to hear it unless it's mm. a complaint on their work, then, then I understand. Mm. Yeah. You know? For me, that's where I draw the line. Like, oh, it's something about them, they don't do it. It's like, it's, it's, they have you wouldn't want to involve how they... yourself. Yeah. Because even though I know what they're doing, or like, even if I hear their personalities, is it going to affect the way they do their job? You know, yeah. it should, we should be able to see their results. You know, we should mm -hmm. be able to see how they perform progress i'm pretty sure that all these supervisors managers and other people they've been together for quite a long time we can see the progress you know? yeah and if it's if the personality goes hand in hand with the results then by all means like you know talk to the person or make an official complaint or whichever or confront them uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. in a very nice way not so aggressive <laughs> okay <laughs> said like like how if a person is is venting or letting it out it's it's yeah. understandable but diminishing someone's value and I think in a context like that, it would be important for the listener to observe the other person's emotions. Like, like even if they're trying to diminish another person's like value, at the end of the it may it, it is it is inappropriate. But yeah. do we do we just punish this individual and be like, hey, no, that's wrong, or do we try to bring their attention to whatever hurt or pain that they might be feeling underlying this whole complaint or, or the gossip or the rant? So mm. like, the, the more you empathically listen to the person, the more you bring their attention to what they're feeling, the, the less they focus on the external source or the external cause or this person or Linda yeah. said that or Karen said this. And it's more like, okay, how am I feeling right now? What do I need? How can I process mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. uh, is there something that needs to be done? What measures can be taken? What can I learn, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm. Yeah. It, it depends on how constructive and nurturing the communication process is. Yeah. So, yeah. I picked one which is not in order. Nice. <laughs>
Oh, this is interesting. What is the best thing you have experienced or heard in the workplace? What is the best thing you have experienced or heard in the workplace? Um, I guess for me, the best experience is kind of simple and it's very intrinsic. Like I've hinted way earlier is <laughs> when I guess I receive kindness from either the customer's back or when I receive kindness also from my supervisors or bosses. Mm. You know, that, that motivates me. That honestly motivates me to like, oh, this job is not so bad. Continue mm-hmm. doing the job and do it better possibly. Mm. For me, that's the best experience. If you want me to pin it to more example, maybe a kid that's saying thank you or having fun in a toy store or a customer that feels thankful for that you arrive earlier ahead of their meeting time. Mm. Yeah. It's those small gestures because mm. it's the small things that count. I think I've asked yeah. before in a pre- previous episode, um, but I think I want to ask what is a form, what is a gesture of kindness that you appreciate from an employer? Like, would it be monetary? You know, because some people would say, oh, more bonus. That would be kind to me. I'd appreciate that. Uh, but would that be what you prefer? Or would you want anything else? I think that falls under support. Because if you, the way I see it is when we talk about bonus in terms of bonus, what we're getting is basically more financial support for our, li- our livelihood. You know? Okay when i receive any uh, kindness as in like support from my supervisors or bosses where they take mm-hmm. the time to teach me or take the time to care about my well-being you know mm-hmm. it's a form of support as well to me so for me bonuses is also another support which is the easiest and uh, <laughs> it's the easiest one that the, meets everyone's is demands most, is it the most motivating it would i would say it's the most effective and blanketed uh, method to motivate mm-hmm. employees, mm-hmm. you know, because it's money. We all need it, mm. you know? regardless but, of not money, still runs the world. <laughs> same if you have to choose, um, and if if money is not an issue of livelihood, um, between the your supervisor um, giving you a, a thank you note, let's say a card versus uh, a small ang pao, which would you prefer? Wait, one is a small thank you note and one is a small ang pao. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would, I would, I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in your question. I would not choose both. I would humbly thank my supervisor or boss and request that you can thank me by offering me a project that I can help you with. Mm. <laughs> you know, you get more projects on, my performance goes up, my performance goes up. Come on, man, you should reward me mm-hmm. according to my performance. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, like, growth and progress, right? That will motivate you. Yeah, for me, it's growth and progress because I'm, I'm still young. I'm only 22. I've got so much things I could learn in this world. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what most employers love to hear. Yes, still young. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eager so, yeah. and willing to learn. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, for me, being in this like theater industry is actually a very small industry in Malaysia. It's not mm-hmm. very well known in in that sense. So I guess yeah. when I when I w- did my internship and all, I I felt very what was very motivating and what was very comforting was that the company is like a family. You feel like your relationship with that person is not just an employee-employer relationship, but more of like a family kind of relationship. And I guess that for me, it's a very motivating thing to have in a in a company because if, if it's just an employee-employer, every day you go to work and then there's no relationship, you know? And, if, and humans, we humans need a kind of bond with with another person a kind of relationship in order to feel motivated and yeah. so for me i guess the best thing i experienced when i did my internship was feeling the sense of belonging in that in that place mm-hmm. uh, would you say that being belonged to a certain uh company 
would be the best thing for you? Would you would you feel very satisfied? It def- definitely. Of course, you know there are some days where where you feel like you don't really belong, but because you feel that when you are with this group of person, you know they because they share the same interest like you, they share the same passion like you. So mm-hmm. it motivates you to work harder and do your best. So mm-hmm. I guess it's probably the best thing that has happened to me since 19 years. It's not very long, but <laughs> but <laughs> but definitely there are other points that are also very motivating, you know, and are good. But like I feel being belonged somewhere, being accepted in yeah. this in the certain place is it's the most motivating thing for me. Very, very similar to what Abigail said. That <laughs> that sense of belonging, uh, empathy, compassion. It it really matters a lot to to be able to observe your employees' needs and and cater to them. Uh, Grace, you spoke about bonus, mm-hmm. uh, if I remember correctly. And like, yeah, yeah sure, that that'd be nice. Uh, I think the element of financial support provided by the employer is a given. Like, like mm-hmm. I. Don't want to think about it as like oh this is an extra like every employee like it's it's their right to to have enough salary or bonuses to to me be able to sustain their lives but beyond that the empathy and compassion is is very important in the sense like it reminds me of uh, my older brother for example he's been working with the the startup like for for um around eight years now and mm-hmm. my brother's married happily married and he has two children and it was Valentine's Day. And before he left the office, his manager called him to his office. And my brother was like, yeah, hey, well, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And he was like, happy Valentine. And my brother was just like, okay. And the boss, like the manager gave him some flowers and gave him an envelope with a bonus. And he's like, hey, why don't you treat your wife today? You know, like, uh, enjoy yourself. So, yeah. so like, these, these kind of gestures, like, like, he knows that my brother is married. He knows that, like, like he, he feels very affectionate towards her, like, like, and and he catered to that, and that was very heartwarming. Uh, another example would be um, two years ago during my internship, I uh, I experienced a bereavement. There was a loss in the family, and it, it was very heartbreaking at the time. I took like a brief break, and when I came back. Like while I was working, I would literally be crying. Like, like I'd be crying while working. And shortly afterwards, I'd be like, hey, I'm sorry about that. And they'd look at me and be like, what are you sorry about? Like, like this is okay. We, we're here to support you. And like, what I really appreciated is that when I was crying, they didn't come around me and go like, oh, hey, what's wrong? Or like, mm-hmm. you're here. Or like, you know, hug or pat. It's more like... We see you. We see your pain. We see you need space, and you're trying to uh, you're trying to carry on with your life. You're trying to to integrate yourself. So we won't make you feel like you're abnormal or as if your pain is something that's out of the ordinary. We respect it, and that like that meant a lot to me. It um, it gave me the feeling that a workplace isn't isn't just somewhere where we're cogs in a machine. It's it's a place where we're human. We we coexist and it's part of our coexistence. And an essential part of it is the acknowledgement to the human element of mm-hmm. every employee and employer, whether it's mm-hmm. emotions, thoughts, feelings, circumstances. So mm-hmm. yeah. Compassion, belonging and empathy to sum it all up. Nice. Thank you for those those examples. It's it really helps to paint a picture very very nicely. Okay, yeah. how about we try to end the session by um, do you have any advice to let's say for the millennials, the upcoming new generation of workforce? I think for the current workforce would be how how do they communicate with um, the new generation of workforce? Uh, being the upcoming workforce, my only advice to people going into the workforce or people in the workforce right now, I guess, is probably having a down-to-earth attitude and being passionate in what you do. I guess it's because if we are down-to-earth in whatever we do in, in our work and we know ourselves, it's easier for us work with others 
So I guess what I advise everyone is to first work on yourself before working before going to a workplace. That way, when you go to work, you know yourself and you know how to work with others. Yes, I I notice that some people like down to earth. Is is might be different the word the phrase. How mm. was your definition of down to earth? Can you give me an example? Probably being honest, mm. giving honest opinions, honest opinions, and whatever that you know, share 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 it with honesty. That yeah, that's probably my definition of down to earth. Yeah. Okay. I uh, first off, I I wholeheartedly agree with. What Abigail said to to be down to earth, it 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 enables you to connect to people. It it really helps you connect to them. To to be very honest, I feel like I'm not in a position to give advice. I'm in a position where I'm looking for advice. But if there's anything that because like you know, uh, well, maybe not the term advice, but you know if if there's something you can say to them that would help you feel more comfortable working with them, yeah. What would you like yeah. to say? I mean, in in terms of working, like in terms of employers, uh, just just compassion, empathy, uh, and uh, to not put us in a box. Like when I say us, I mean any individual that you hire, whether a millennial or anything. We're we're all we're all growing. We're not defined by a single moment. So that's one thing. As for like people like myself, and this is an advice like I'm not only giving to people in my shoes, but to myself as well. I'm still trying to learn that is. When you look around you at people who are "quote unquote" more successful than you, look at them to learn and not to define your own value, because your value is not determined by those around you. You got your own journey. Let's let's not be harsh with ourselves. I've uh, I'm very I'm very proud of, to see friends that are 24 years old and they have their own businesses going on. 22 years old and married and. I'm just sitting here, like calling my dad. I'm like, "Hey, dad, I need some money," and my dad replies, "Yeah, me too, son." So it doesn't it doesn't work very much. So like, uh, you you're learning. You know, we're all in our own journey. We're all t- doing things at our own pace. Whether you're 30, 40, 50, uh, well, don't be unemployed at 50. But if you are, that's also okay. Uh, as long as you're conscientious. Sorry, as long as you're putting the effort. As long as you're actively learning, that's it. You can't control your circumstances. The economy might be going down terribly. People might be apathetic. Uh, capitalism might be increasing the wage gap. But that doesn't mean that we're the victims of our circumstances. We are in control of what we do. So we carry on, you know, like uh, Great Gatsby beating against the current with the boats or whatever he said. But yeah, we just don't define yourself. Forget perfectionism. Do what you can do. Thank you for so much for the the shares, the thoughts for this session, especially to like Esam, Abigail, and of course、uh, Imran. Because of your courage to speak and to share here, I believe that we are actually one step closer to bridging the gap between generations. And、uh, and I want to thank you those who have tuned in to watch. I hope that this to this session will bring some light to the millennials of what else we are thinking. Uh, and of course, don't forget to leave a like, comment on this video, comment your question, so that I will ask your question to the next guest that is going to be on the show. That's it. That's all for today. See you next time. You can say my bye at the forty-third minutes. Forty-third minutes. Bye bye. Peace be upon y'all. Cheers. <laughs>